Hello, everyone, and welcome to Paula's Soapbox Live. Well, I am sure you will recognize my guest for his role as Dylan Quartermain on General Hospital, but his latest role is that of Cupid in the CW Seeds Cupid's Match. Here to talk about all of that, as well as some of his other projects, is actor Robert Palmer Watkins. Robert, Hello. welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How you doing? Absolutely. I'm good. We had a few technical issues, but everything's good now, That's so we great. should be all right. Okay, so first things first. Okay. General Hospital. What What is your official status? Are you recurring? You know, <laughs> Are you um, out? Or <laughs> as of right now, my character Dylan is you know he's a he's a director, artist, photographer. So uh, he's away filming a movie, working on a movie. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if the writers know what they want to do with the character long term. Um, they haven't given me any word as to whether they'll be bringing the character back on the canvas anytime soon. I do know that Kiki and Dylan broke up on the show in the past few weeks, so. It doesn't look like it's, if it is going to happen, it doesn't look like it's in the immediate, immediate future. Um, so I'm just, you know, staying busy and excited about the new projects I'm working on. But, you know, if they ever ask me back, depending on my schedule and what else I'm working on at the time, I would definitely consider it. You know, I loved playing Dylan. General Hospital taught me a lot about being an actor and how to memorize lines really quickly and, you know, how to kind of be in the public eye. It was totally, it was definitely my big break. So, um, so many doors are opening now, you know, because of that. And I'm really excited to see what, what's coming, but, um, you know, definitely not out of the question. I would, I would be interested maybe to go back to general hospital, but I think for right now, it seems like they've got kind of their central storylines already happening with Steve Burton coming back to the show and, um, there's some really, really crucial, pivotal storylines that are happening right now. So I think now that they broke Kiki and Dylan up, it doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. But, you know, I know about as much as you guys do. It's a soap opera, you know, never say never. You know, yeah. I could be I could have they could have killed me off and I could still come back. I was going to say they so, could have killed you off and they brought you back. So, right. obviously. so you, you know, you just don't know. So I, I all I can do is just stay busy and, and keep moving forward. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, well, you've auditioned for General Hospital a few times before you actually booked the role of Dylan. Um, and yeah. actually, you auditioned to play Morgan at one time. Yeah, I believe so. I mean, that's never been totally confirmed, but I did audition for a contract character around the time that they were casting we, what, I, what we now know as Morgan. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say because whenever they're casting a character for a soap, especially... They don't really let you know who the character is going to be. Yeah. Um, so I went in for a character and then the character of Morgan a few months later was brought to the screen. So I'm assuming that it was the character of Morgan. But yeah, I went in. I went in for Mark Teshner, the casting director, a few times before I finally booked the role that I got. Um, and we always had a really good rapport, good relationship. And then I actually went to his class. He teaches a, a, a acting class here in, in Hollywood. So I went and took his workshop. And really got to know him well through that. And he remembered me coming in to read for him a few times and just kind of kept that relationship strong, you know. Um, and finally, a role popped up that I guess I was right for. He called me in. My manager got me in there and, uh, you know, booked it. It was, it was a process. It was a long process, you know. I think when I screen tested, it was down to six guys. So yeah. even after the audition and the callback and the producer, uh, you know, meeting, even, you know, after all those things, they were still – had six guys that were doing the screen test. So it's a competitive process for sure. But um, yeah, really was, was really, really happy. I got it. That was one of the best days of my life for sure. Getting that phone call. So. Yeah. And you didn't even know that you were auditioning for the role of Dylan. I didn't know I it was Dylan. The, no, yeah. I didn't. Um, my manager, I think they had the fake name of the character was Dustin or something. <laughs> so I just assumed it was going to be a new character, you know? Yeah. Um, but then when I got it, you know, my manager said, hey, you got the role. And just so you know, it's it's a, you're a quarter man. You're Dylan Quarterman. It's a legacy character. So it was really it was really cool. I can't believe, you know, I was on the show for about two and a half years and uh, it flew by. But like I said, life changing experience, regardless of whether I, they ever bring me back on or I'm ever on that show or another soap. Um, I'll always have, you know, the, the utmost respect for for soap, soap actors and the crew and the producers and the writers, everybody, because it's just 
such a different process. I mean, how quick soaps move compared to any other genre, yeah. you know? So it taught me a lot and I'm all, you know, I'll always be grateful whether I go ever go back or not. Well, it's like you said, it's, it's boot camp for actors. It really is. I mean, I hear that over and over again. Yeah, it is. It totally is. I mean, you're, yeah, yeah. There's days where, you know, you th could film up to three episodes a day. I mean, that's rare, but they're all, they're usually filming about two episodes a day, but they, you know, there were a few times where I shot three episodes in a day and it's, it's tough, but you know, you kind of get used to it and you just learn how to kind of, if you mess up, kind of improvise and save it or whatever, you know? So yeah. Cause you don't get very many takes, right? You don't get, yeah. This is the one, you know, kind of genre where you really get, if you're lucky, you might get two takes, but that's rare. I mean, you, yeah. they're on a tight schedule, you know, so you got to come with it the first go around. Yeah, you and don't want to learn... be the person that messes up. and <laughs> Exactly, yeah. So you learn that pretty quickly. <laughs> Within your first few weeks, you either sink or swim, you know? Um, yeah. And I was, you know, there were a few times I was drowning a little bit, but I kept swimming and, you know, it worked out, so. Yeah. Well, is it true that, that you were almost down to your last couple of bucks when you booked this role? I'm so sorry. My an alarm went off on my phone when you said oh, what, what, what? that's okay. Oh, is it true that you were down to like your last couple of dollars when you booked this role? Yeah, people think that that's like a joke when I tell that. No, I was literally, literally had two dollars, no savings. I'm not saying like oh, I had two dollars in my checking and then I had a few thousand. No, I had two had nothing to my name. Wow. Um, and my car had just like died on the freeway a month before and. It was, yeah, it was a journey. It's a, it'll test you out here. I mean, but it's like any career, you know, any, you know, mm -hmm. you got to pay your dues and kind of work your way up the ladder and you get one little gig, one little promotion here and you keep hustling. And so it just took, it takes some time, but I think it makes it all that much sweeter, you know, um, when you do work for that long and that hard. And, and honestly, I mean, yeah, it seemed like it took forever. You know, I say like, wow, it took me six years after school to finally book something big, but I mean, there's a lot of actors that, it's, you know, they, they're out here for 20 years and they don't get something that big. Wow. So I really can't complain. You know, at the end of the day, I'm still only 30 and I've already been, you know, have a, that huge credit on my resume and, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm now working on so many other things. So I still it was still still pretty fast that I got a break. But when you're didn't out feel here, that way at the time, though, at the time, <laughs> it does not feel that way when you're you know working three part time jobs and you got yeah. a bucks to eat and you're like, how long is this going to go on? That's what's scary. You don't know. You just never know when it's when you're going to finally get something. So you just got to really want it. And I do. I mean, I've wanted to be an actor since I was probably 14 years old. Um, yeah. I did my first play in high school um, and I just I loved it. And as soon as I realized, oh, this is you can actually go pursue this as a career. Um, as soon as I realized that I just never looked back. And I, even though I knew it was going to be hard and people said I, I was crazy for trying to go pursue this and my parents were worried about me doing it, you know, <laughs> but um, I just always knew it's what I wanted to do. And I mean, ultimately that's what got me through the rough times is just keeping my eye on the prize and it's still going to be rough. I mean, right now I'm kind of in between acting gigs and yeah. hoping something sticks, you know, it's always going to be ups and downs, but I think with anything in life, if you want it bad enough, you just keep doing it, you know? Yeah. As crazy as it may be. <laughs> what I thought was so ironic was that Scott Clifton, who obviously played Dylan before you, was a guest speaker at the conservatory you were attending in Los Angeles while he was playing Dylan. Yes. That's and then you crazy. later yeah. booked that role. It almost seems like it was faded or something. It was like meant, almost meant to be, it seemed like. Yeah, it was very strange. And because I had never watched soap operas growing up and I never had watched General Hospital when he came and talked of course I was impressed and I listened to everything he said just because he was a working actor but I didn't even know who he was you know I didn't know what character he played and I think because I didn't really watch soaps or follow soaps I didn't remember that that was the guy that came that played Dylan Quartermain because that name didn't mean anything to me you know yeah so it, I completely it slipped my mind and when I booked it I actually had a classmate reach out to me and say dude that's <laughs> you're, you're, you booked the role that Scott Clifton that was the actor that came to talk to our class and I was that was I was like what yeah so yeah it's pretty crazy I mean when I found that out I, I was like damn it's almost like the universe planned that or like you know what I mean it's, it's, it's it was very very surreal but he was a, really nice about it he actually um I guess he saw that I booked it and you know um 
he tweeted something like congrats to the new Dylan, you know, super excited for you. And I was like, dude, I can't believe I got this. You're, you came and talked to my class. <laughs> he responded back. I and mean, I've met him since a few times at different like Emmy events and stuff. And he's a great guy. So, but he's doing well. He's on bold and beautiful and yeah. you know, killing it. So. Yeah. Well, um, as you said, you know, you didn't really grow up watching soaps. So you're, I'm sure you were not familiar with the whole soap opera world, the, the fan base that soaps bring in. So did, did that kind of take you aback the response from the fans? Yes, it did. Um, the soap fans are amazing. I mean, really, really amazing. I cannot believe how supportive they've been. Um, you know, even when I got basically bumped off contract, I mean, the reaction from them, they were more angry than, you know, not that I was angry. I think I was surprised a little bit at first. Yeah. But, and just, it, it was just a change for me, but I wasn't yeah. angry at anybody. I just was kind of like, oh, okay, this is new. What am I going to do now? What's next? What does this mean? Am I still recurring? Am I not? So yeah. it was just, I was processing everything, but the fans, <laughs> the fans <laughs> did not waste any time to just jump to support me. And I mean, that meant a lot. Um, it's hard. It's hard because I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the support so much. It made me feel really good. It did. It made me feel really good, but it's also, there's so many factors that come into play. You know, it's hard to really blame one person, any person, might not be anybody's fault. It might, you know, it, it, it might not be personal. I, I, you know, you just don't know. You don't know. Yeah. I mean, um, with any show, you know, decisions are made and it's about the show as a whole, not, you know, it's yeah. not a personal attack when somebody's let go or, you know, the story changes or, you know, the budget changes, you know? Um, yeah. so I'm, I'm in such a great place with it all now. And I'm so excited about the stuff that's coming from my fan base, you know, and my yeah. following now I'm getting in bigger and better auditions and Cupid's match on the CW seed is great. Yeah. And my movie I shot. So, but I will say, yeah, I mean, it was, it felt good. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and lie that, it, that yeah. it did feel good when the fans jumped on social media and were so like having my back, you know, yeah. I mean, it was nice. It was really nice to see. Well, and the good thing is you now have a built-in fan base. So yeah. anything that you do for yeah. years to come, you're going to have that. People are going to help promote your stuff. So and That's amazing. I mean, and I've already seen it doing, you know, my movie that hasn't been released yet. That'll come out this summer, last three yeah. days. Yeah. Um, but just the comments and the people asking me about that and then Cupid's Match. I mean, so many of you guys have gone on – you know, YouTube and CWC and watched it. I mean, it got over 125 million impressions on the app and between the app, YouTube, social media, everywhere it was posted and shared, it's gotten over 125 million. That's amazing. I didn't so, realize it had gotten that many. I knew it had gotten insane. quite a bit, but now, yeah. Now that's worldwide as well, because the book, the book series Cupid's Match, which was on Wattpad, uh, had a huge following and they had a huge following internationally. So a lot of those views were also international views and likes and shares and comments, but still, I mean, that's just, that number blows my mind. You know? <laughs> yeah. But so I'm not saying it was all soap people, obviously that were, that were giving it those impressions, but it's probably a, of, a good a chunk of, of them were soap people. <laughs> was that <laughs> probably a good chunk of them was soap people. So <laughs> probably were that followed me and I appreciate it. I really do. You know, it's awesome. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited, but thank you everybody you know, who's been following me and supporting me and sent me a nice message and it means a lot. Well, when I was researching you, I noticed that, you know, obviously you had done a few other things before General Hospital. A lot of people mm -hmm. probably don't know that. Yeah. One thing that I noticed was that you won a crawling contest when you were a year old. Yeah. Where is that posted? I, I, I research. I don't know. It's, so funny. <laughs> it's, it's probably so funny. another it's interview you did. No, that's so funny. I did. I guess I talked about that in one of my interviews or something. But yeah, I was they asked me, like, name one thing that nobody would know about you or something. And, you know, you run out of stuff to say because you answer these great random questions so often. I try to think of new stuff every time. Yeah. Uh, so that time, I guess I talked about that. But yeah, apparently, I mean, I don't remember it because I was one years old. But, right. Yeah. Uh, my sister and my mom always talk about how funny it was because they put me in a baby calling crawling contest when I was one year, one years old. <laughs> And they said, Robert, I tell you, you like demolished the other kids because all we had to do, we held up a red balloon at the end of the, <laughs> and they were like, and I don't know what it was, but you wanted that balloon. Like <laughs> they said on your mark, you set go and you took off. Like we've never <laughs> seen a kid crawl that fast. So yeah, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. I guess I knew I wanted that balloon, but right, yeah. random little fact about <laughs> my, my life. 
Well, it led her own, much later on. You trained as a hip hop dancer. Yes, I did. I, I did about, let's see, I did probably four or five years uh, hip, uh, hip hop and like modern dance. And then it was really fun because, you know, not many guys where I'm from did any type of dancing. So, yeah. you know, I did sports and stuff too growing up, but I definitely, as soon as I did my first play, I totally realized that I'm more about the, you know, creative side of stuff and the arts. And um, yeah. so, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how I got involved. I did did my first hip hop class and was just, you know, they were like, Oh, we need guys, you know? And I, you know, I, it was great. It was fun. It was, you know, good exercise and it was to music and I love music and stuff. So, uh, and then it helped me, it's helped me a lot in different acting roles, you know, being a singer and then also having a little bit of dance in my background has definitely helped with different roles, um, and auditions and stuff. So, yeah. Well, you wanted to, at one time, didn't you want to be a, a Disney animator? I did. It did. Yeah. When I was when I was a little kid, I used to draw all the time and just all day, all long, all day long. But uh, when I did my first play, I don't know, in high school, something switched. And I was just like, I, I just, still want to do something creative. I know I want to do something creative, but yeah, I think for a career, I want to I want to go try to be an actor. So but yeah, I still love art. I mean, anything art, anything creative. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, well maybe if you, you know, did release an album or something in the future. Yeah, that'll come true. in handy. You that's can make true. your own artwork for the album or something. Yes, so, you know, um, and I also read that you used to help your family flip houses growing up. These are yeah. so seemingly random things. Random that stuff, I know. Yeah. <laughs> my yeah. My mom and dad, when I was, I guess, started in middle school and then throughout high school. But my mom was an interior designer and kind of on project rather than work for another company. So she, um, they bought a few, I think they bought th two or three or four houses uh, and they, you know, kind of were dive houses and they bought them in Richmond, Virginia. And then we flipped them and resold them. And I, you know, got to learn how to paint and lay floors and knock down walls and help wallpaper. And I learned about all that stuff. So yeah, I think that would be a cool, definitely at some point in my future, I want to get back into that when I have a little more money to invest, you know. That could be a possible reality series for you. That's true. Even on the web, you could do something with that. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd be down. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I met the Property Brothers from HGTV, and they're yeah. doing pretty well for themselves. So, yeah, and and all of those home improvement shows are coming back now. Like, yeah. um, Trading Spaces is coming back in a couple of months. So, yeah, it is. Oh, cool. Yeah, I know that. yeah, I think in April. So, oh, nice. So we mentioned your music and you were doing Funk It Fridays for a while mm -hmm. and you were doing covers of songs. You even had some pretty well-produced videos yeah, some covers. So are you planning on getting back into that? I would love to. Yeah, I would love to. I mean, I, we released a little, a shorter one about um, a couple months ago where I'm on the rooftop with my buddy William. Yeah. Um, that was a cover though. But yeah, I'm working on actually right now, I'm working with a producer, my, my roommate, um, Patrick Garcia uh, has his own, he has his own rec record label called Silver Screens and um, No Culture is his record label actually. And he's helping me produce some original music. So okay. the next stuff I want to release, I definitely want it to be some original stuff. You know, I'm, covers are great and I love doing other people's music, but I definitely want to start doing some of my own. But I've just been so busy with auditioning and, you know, this transition from General Hospital to my movie you're cutting out can you hear me i think we lost the connection with robert Okay, it looks like we've lost connection with Robert. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know if he can hear me or not. So, Can you still see me? I can't see you. I can hear you now. You cut out that yeah, last... That. That's okay. Now? That last part was just... I didn't get any of that. Um, where, what was the last thing you heard? <laughs> Uh, you were talking about your music and you did, you were talking about covers and you said that the last video you put up was with your friend 
and then it cut out. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I was just saying the last the last cover I did was with my friend William. We uh, did a little cover of a song called Gorgeous, and we did it on the rooftop. And um, I was just saying that now I'm working with uh, my other roommate, Patrick Garcia, on some original music. He's a, produ a music producer. His record label is called No Culture. And i um, really excited to, to share some of that stuff with you guys. But I don't know. It'll probably be a few months because we're kind of busy with a bunch of other acting stuff as well right now. Right. Well, you know, maybe next time you come back on, you can sing and play some of your original music. So I would love to. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, and something else about you, you were also a Rodan and Fields consultant. I am a Rodan and Fields how did consultant. You, yes. How did you get involved in that? Uh, basically, my mom and my sister were using it and they were raving about it. And I got on General Hospital. And they were like, okay, Robert, now you have a little bit of money to take care of yourself. You should really consider taking care of your skin. You're an actor. You're living in Hollywood. You're on TV every day. I was like, all right, fine, fine. So <laughs> I reluctantly bought a regimen from them. And um, I, I, I bought a regimen and I loved it. Within two to three weeks, my skin looked so freaking awesome that I had so many people coming up to me and being like, what are you using on your skin? It looks great. And I was referring all these people over to my sister because she was, was a consultant. Yeah. Um, and I was finally, I was like, why am I not just being, why don't I just join your team and become a consultant? I feel like I'm handing all these customers over to you. Right. <laughs> and I, I mean, I researched the company and I just, I, I believed in what they stand for. And I think they're empowering entrepreneurs to, you know, have their own business and not have to work a nine to five every day. Um, and I think it's really great. And ultimately as an actor, like, you know, realistically, I'm going to be in between gigs on and off, you know, between jobs. And I don't ever want to have to go back to a nine to five uh, job. I'd rather have my freedom. So I yeah. saw the opportunity. I believed in the product. Um, they're the same doctors that invented, invented proactive, Dr. Rodan and Dr. Fields. So they are very, very smart. Um, so I jumped in and two years later, I'm still a consultant and I'm really happy I did. So yes, if anybody out there wants to talk to me about that, yes. message me and I'm <laughs> not, not to tell like there. Part. Yeah, exactly. Well, growing up, I read that you had had severe anxiety mm -hmm. and OCD, mm -hmm. and you had thought at one time about writing a book about dealing with that sort of thing in everyday life. So is that something that you still want to do? Yes, I would love to. That book idea has gotten put on hold. Um, mm -hmm. but you got a lot some, going on, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, at some point, I definitely, definitely want to do that. Um I, I kind of always wanted to do that a little bit later on in my career. I want to, you know, do, do some more projects and um, maybe do some more TV and movie and music stuff before I really share, not, not share my story. Cause I think I've, I've definitely am open about sharing my anxiety and my OCD and all that stuff I've gone through. But as far as how to deal with it and structure it in your life, I feel like I'm still learning a lot about that. Um, yep. So I think that I'd like to do it maybe later on in life when I really, have more of a solution for it. You know what I mean? Um, and how I incorporate it into my career, which I feel, I still feel like my career is just kind of beginning. So it'd yeah. be nice to kind of do that maybe down the road. Yeah. Well, speaking as someone who has dealt with her own issues mm -hmm. with anxiety, depression, OCD, all of that. Um, yeah. It's, I, I definitely think that it's something that you are constantly learning to manage. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really ever go away. It's just yeah. something you, you know, it's just another aspect of your personality almost. I agree. Yeah. So. And I don't think it'll ever, I know it will never fully go away, but I do <laughs> think that over the years I've definitely gotten better at dealing with it and come up with different, you know, routines yeah. and just, just, you know, becoming a more mature adult too. You just realize that you just need to let things go sometimes and you can't obsess, obsess over stuff and yeah. you're just not as in control as you would like to believe you are. You're just not. And that's life. And yeah, I think that as I um, <laughs> continue to experience life and get a little bit older, I'm going to have even more wisdom hopefully to put into a book. So yeah. that's why I kind of want to wait on that. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's not like you don't have a lot of other things going on right now. So right. one of which is that maybe that you mentioned uh, a little while ago, uh, last three days. So let's talk about that for a minute. Okay. It comes out this summer, right? 
it, yeah, well, they're not sure totally on a release date. Okay. Um, okay. But yes, they're hoping for a spring summer release. Um, it's called Last Three Days. I play Jack Clough, an undercover cop. And um, I'm really, really excited about it. It was a really fun role. You know, I got to do that right after playing Dylan and it's just a totally different character um, and totally different career and profession. And he's a little bit older than Dylan and he's dealing with the struggles that come with trying to maintain a relationship while having um, such a demanding job. I mean, being being an undercover cop is, is very, very, very demanding. And um, so it's it's a, it's a good it's a great movie. Great story. I think it's a lot of people are going to be able to relate to it because it's got, you know, people that love action movies are going to like it because it's definitely got action. But then it's got this love story. And um, this, you see this character kind of go through the process of like, kind of being in a new relationship and a newlywed, how do you deal with the struggles that come with that while, you know, trying to keep your job, you know, that you've worked so hard to have. So it's, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's going to be really, really great. I've seen some clips. I haven't gotten to watch the whole movie yet. There's it's still in the editing phase and, yeah. and stuff, but I think that people are, I think it's going to be great. So don't have a release date for it yet, but when no I do, release date. I will be, yeah. So where will people be able to watch it? Is it going to be out on like DVD or is it a, like a short film? Is it going to be online? It's going to be uh, most likely, I mean, they're hoping for a theater release, but you never really oh, know. Okay. You, yeah. You don't know until it's, until it's uh, totally done and until they, you know, figure out the dis distribution and stuff like that. So we'll see, but most likely it'll have some type of limited theater release and then, okay. you know, hopefully you know, Netflix, Amazon. I'm not, I'm not totally sure yet, to be honest. Okay. Well, definitely keep us updated on that. So, of course. Uh, so did I see that you were working on another film with Haley Aaron? Yes. Broken Strings? Uh, it was, it's a short film, actually. We kind of did it film. for fun. I'm doing it with two of our good friends from Young and the Restless, actually. Karen oh, okay. Grimes and Robert Addison. So it's kind of just a fun project. We decided to throw together ourselves and shoot it, but we're uh, not totally finished with that yet. So that'll be coming out hopefully within the next few months. We got to wrap that up too. That's another okay. another pro side project <laughs> that we're trying to finish. Well, let's talk uh, Cupid's match. That that seemed like a, a kind of a faded uh, role for you to have too, because KR Squared Productions they made a trailer for Cupid's match. And it was a part of a contest, right? And yes. they got chosen to make the pilot. You had worked with them before. So this is how yes. you became involved in this project. Yes, yes. So I worked with them on a movie back in the day called Back to Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, that was a project I did a few years prior to General Hospital. And I, I had a supporting role, so I wasn't a huge lead in the movie or anything. But uh, I kept in touch with them. Uh, they're a mother-daughter production team uh, they've you know they just kept in touch with me kind of followed my career and I've followed theirs and they've worked their way up and they've done a ton of commercials and different projects and when this role opened up they reached out reached out to me and I was like yeah I'd love to come read for it so it's just really cool it's cool to be working on something you know uh, for CW obviously it's great yeah. uh, but also to be working with some friends that you know we kind of started working together before our careers started taking off and now we get to work together now where we're a little more established and uh, it's just nice. It's nice to be, you know, it feels like, feels like family working with them. So. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that keep its matches based on a series of books that's online. It's on Wattpad. I had never heard of Wattpad before researching you for this interview. Yeah. Um, but apparently this book has, or this series of books, it's gotten quite a few reads online yeah. before, you know, it was decided to, to try to make a, a series out of it. So did it make you nervous to take on this role of Cupid, knowing how popular the books were? No, I was excited. I mean, I think that, um, I think that the fans of a book series have definitely have a specific vision in mind, you know, and they're yeah. very, passionate about what they feel and what they want to see when a series comes to life or a movie comes to life. And that's very common. I think it happened with Twilight. It, yeah, it must certainly happen with Twilight. <laughs> right, right. So, you know, we expect, 
you just can't please everybody. You can't. And I learned that being on general hospital, there's always, and haters are always going to be out there and people that just want to put negative, negative negativity out there. Um, so you just have to try to make the best show possible, do the best job you can do and realize that even if people watch it and it's not what they expected. And at first they're not totally digging it. If, if it's a good story and, and, um, you know, even if the actors are different than what they wanted, if the acting is good and if, you know, it's done well, eventually they'll give it a chance um, yeah. and they'll appreciate the new version of whatever it is that they thought it was going to be. But um, no, I wasn't nervous. I mean, I think the character is, I, is, is good for me. I think I, I, I can do this character definitely. Uh, and I think that it's fun for me to get to play kind of a, a character with a little more edge, a little more of a bad boy. Yeah. Um, you know, before Dylan, before playing Dylan on General Hospital, I actually got cast as kind of the asshole type <laughs> character quite often. So it's kind of funny that my break kind of in the industry was playing such a good guy. Dylan is such a good yeah. guy, um, which is really cool. And I think that that's not to like call myself a good guy because that just sounds kind of arrogant. But I think that Dylan was similar to me in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, so that's it was nice to kind of start my career kind of, and uh, at least on a, a, you know, a bigger TV show or movie as somebody who was kind of similar to myself. Um, but like I said, before Dylan, I got to, you know, I usually was typecast as kind of the cheating boyfriend or the jock asshole type. And I think well, those you are ended up that way on general hospital. So. Yeah. They, that's what they ended up. <laughs> yeah. That, well, that's a whole different story, but uh, <laughs> we won't get into that. Um but I think that uh, it's fun. It's fun. That's why I like being an actor is you get to play different characters in different roles. And it's fun yeah. to play somebody like yourself because you have to tap into who you really are. And it's fun to play people who are completely different from you. You know, I think that's one of the funnest parts about my job. So Dylan's Dylan is or, uh, Cupid is similar to me in a lot of ways, but he's, you know, definitely a little bit of a rebel and lives on the edge, which I actually can relate to uh, as well. But uh yeah, it's cool. It's cool to play a different part. I was excited about it. I think I'm, you know, I think that my, um, I don't know. I think that I, my age range and kind of what I'm doing on social media and what I uh, like to listen to and kind of put out there on the, on the web and stuff has a lot of um, potential for a young fan base, I guess you could say. I don't know. Yeah. I don't yeah, really know where I, I was going so. with that, but I think CW <laughs> is, is right for me right now. Um, yeah. And I think that um, being on a soap, I got, you know, a, a huge platform and a huge following from a certain type of audience. And I think the CW is a different type of audience, just like Disney is a different type of audience, just yeah. like, you know, Marvel movies are a different type of audience. So I'm excited to kind of be in a different world as well, you know? Yeah. So it'll be cool to see where it goes. Well, I know that, you know, the pilot is already obviously been released. It's about eight mm -hmm. minutes long. Uh, so is there any word yet about whether it's going to be picked up for a series? Because I know that there was some question about that. Yeah. So we don't know yet <laughs> to answer your question. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's um, that that's the plan. That's the goal. Obviously, we want more for sure. CW, yeah. I think, all, you know, all along, they've that's the hope. Uh, but they wanted to see how this little teaser pilot episode would do and kind of what you know how many impressions they would be getting so they um apparently apparently it's doing really well a lot of people have interacted with it as we said before 125 million impressions so that's awesome yeah. so it's looking good but i can't confirm you know yet what the plan is um so keep watching it keep sharing it everybody go like it comment on it um but yeah we're hope definitely hoping for more there's a lot more story to tell so that's not enough. That little eight minute episode is not enough. We don't want to stop. No, it. it's definitely a little teaser. Just, just enough yeah. to get people interested. So. Um, okay. So I read about another film that you're doing. You still there? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the thing froze again. So <laughs> um, yeah. So you have another film coming out with a few other uh, daytime stars, William DeVry, Donnell yeah. Turner, uh, Corbin Burnson. Uh, it's Surviving Theater 9. This is a very serious film. So what can you tell us about this one? 
Yeah, this film we actually shot about a year ago. So uh, I don't know why it was just announced like uh, all of a sudden this week. There's all these articles, uh, maybe because it's hitting festival circuits or maybe because somebody yeah. in the soap world found it on IMDb, but it's been posted and oh, okay. finished for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I think it hasn't it hasn't been premiered yet anywhere in the major markets. So maybe it's a little more under wraps. But I do believe they've been submitting it to different film festivals and it is getting you know a good response. But basically, the writer, Tim, he experienced being in a theater right next to Theater 9. So that Colorado shooting that yeah. happened years ago, Theater 9 is the theater that got, you know, attacked. And he was in the yeah, in the, the in the Batman the Premiere. Yes, yes. And he was in the theater right next to that one. And bullets actually went through the screen and shot people in his theater as well. So obviously it was a very, very traumatic experience for him. He, he was there with his cousin, who I play his cousin. Mm -hmm. And um, he wrote this film and starred in it, playing himself. And it basically, you know, it tells the story of what happened that night. But then it also is mainly focused on what these victims go through when they're recovering from something like this, you know, yeah. it's such a sad thing, but it's so, it's so common these days, you know, in our society, yeah. it just happened again in Florida last week. And yeah. it's, you know, we all talk about it and, and, you know, the week of one of these shootings, everybody's talking about it and giving their condolences and posting on social media. And then we forget about it and we move on with our lives but these yeah. people that go through it have to deal with it every day. Wow. You know, if they're survivors or they were there or they have somebody that, that died, they're still, they're still dealing with that, you know? And that's what the story is about. Tim's like, look, I'm still going through like PTSD because of this. And this happened years ago. Yeah. You know, it's so easy for everybody to be sad about it for a week and then move on. But it's so it's not a humor. I think it's really important right now. And I think that's why, Maybe that's why the articles are coming out about this movie now is because it's it's getting some traction in the circuits because people are going, wow, this is really relevant to what's going on in our society. Yeah. And it's a story that needs to be told. Like we need to be talking about this and how like this is affecting. No, it's not just 16 people that just died in Orlando. That's horrible, obviously. Mm -hmm. But think about yeah. all those families that are going to be affected from that and all the people that didn't die that day. That yeah. are going to be freaking out now anytime they go to a public place. I mean, for the you know for years to come, the rest of their lives. So, I'm glad. I'm really proud. I mean, I'm a small part in this movie. I'm not a huge part in this movie. Um, I'm a huge part in the storyline, but I'm not in the movie a ton. You know, I've got some yeah. cr crucial scenes, but just being a part of a, the story that's being told and bringing more awareness to this subject, I think, is really important. And I hope that I hope as many people see it as possible because we clearly have an issue that needs to be talked about and, and yeah. done. And, you so. know, once once the media moves on to another story... Yeah, it's over. Like you like you said, people yeah. move on. It's easy to forget because it mm -hmm. that will happen. Something yeah. else will come along and it'll take it out of the headlines and, you know. So, totally. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that they're making a movie about... I'm glad somebody who, ex who was there and actually experienced it right. is able to make a movie about it. I agree. Because, you yeah. know, I would rather I would rather see a movie from somebody who knows it firsthand as opposed to somebody who just imagined what it would be like, you know? Right, right, right. So. Totally. Well, you have a couple of events coming up, I believe. Uh, March 20, 23rd, you have Contractors for Kids rolling through the decades with, um, let's see, I think Kayla Aaron is in that with you, is doing that with you, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so what Haley can you tell us about that? Myself. So Contractors for Kids is a charity organization that I'm really, really happy to be kind of partnered with, I guess. I'm, I guess you could say I'm kind of one of their brand ambassador kind of people. I just, <laughs> I just try to get involved as much as I can and try to, you know, shout them out on social media. Um, they're a small grassroots organization, um, but I met them through some of the general hospital fan events that I was doing. They used to come along and help out with the events, but also at the end, we would try to auction some stuff off to raise money for this charity organization. But basically contractors for kids is a um, organization near long Island that chip in and help families when they have a sick kid, you know, um, it can be really, really expensive. And sometimes parents have to work, double you know to pay for the medical bills or they have to leave work so they can take care of the kid and finances are crazy i mean you know hospital bills and all of that stuff is yeah insane and the the last thing a family should have to deal with or worry about when they're dealing with a, a 
dying child or a sick kid is money, you know? I mean, that's, yeah. that's awful. So this, this organization steps in and basically raise money, find money some way, shape or form to get these families so that they can, that's one less burden they have to deal with while they're trying to, you know, get their kid healthy again. So I just, I don't know. I just really connected with the people that were running it. You know, I saw what they were about. I heard some of the stories of kids they've saved or families they've just been with while they were going through this, um, mm -hmm. paying for a kid's funeral. I mean, like, can you imagine having a child pass away and you can't afford? I, it, it, I don't even it's... want to talk about it. It blows my mind. But so hearing some of the stories, I just said, I want to be involved, you know, and I wish I could be involved even more. Hopefully we'll plan some more cool stuff in the future. But um, this is their big annual gala that they do at the aquarium in Long Island. The tickets mm -hmm. are if you go to um, contractor con contractorsforkids.com, I believe, or just it's Google. Dot, I think it's dot org, yeah. Dot org, okay, dot org. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if you if you Google mm -hmm. that or, or put that in your your URL, you should be able to find the link. Yeah. And they've got all of their events listed for you know the upcoming months, and that's their main one they do every March. Oh, okay. Um, and it's it's at the aquarium and basically they just throw a big, big party there at the aquarium. It's really cool. Um the tickets are a little a little pricey. I think they're around a little over two hundred dollars, but all the you know, the money's going back to such a good cause. Yeah. Um, and it's so fun. I mean, they've got music vendor vendors there and performers and awesome food and every year they have a theme. So this year it's rolling through the decades and Haley and I were like, hey, we would love to come and support and we'll probably do a little auction or a little lunch, you know, to raise yeah. some money as well. But so really excited about that. But yeah, check them out. Contractors for Kids. OK. And then uh, you have Soap Fest, right? May 25th mm -hmm. through the 28th. Yes. In Marco Island. OK. And you can go to theater on Marco dot com forward yes. slash Soap Fest for that. Yes. So. And that is another awesome um that's another awesome event that uh, they do every year. So fest, they're basically raising money for kids in need um, around the area. A lot of the kids um, have either, either mental health issues or uh, I think a big chunk, majority of them are autistic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they range on the scale from um, different, different issues that they're dealing with, but it's really great. I, I've gone the past two years and we do a little, the first day we get there, we do a painting with the kids and then we auction off the painting um, on the boat on that Saturday and it's just it's it's a great way to kind of get together and a bunch of other soap stars come from different shows and it's a lot of fun yeah. so and it's for a great cause so check that out as well if anybody's in the Florida area at the time please come yeah May 25th through the 28th so yeah. okay well we want to remind everybody that obviously you can watch Cupid's Match right now the first episode hopefully there will be more um on the CWC app you can get it right on your phone or a uh, tablet or whatever um cwc.com as well uh you can also watch it on youtube and roku and apple tv yes. and amazon fire tv um yeah so um anything that you would like to add before we go i want to apologize that i've had so many technical difficulties while we've been doing <laughs> this interview uh, I feel like believe I'm, me, you're not the first. You won't be the last. Is, well, I not didn't a big have deal. this app. Everybody out there, I didn't have this app downloaded, so I didn't know how it would work. And yeah, my bad because I feel like this is not good lighting, not shot professionally. You look great. You've got oh like, well, your, thank you. But <laughs> my phone is in and out. My alarm keeps popping on, so I apologize for that. But I hope I got all the information out there. You uh, did. No, I thought it went remarkably well, considering we got off to a rocky start. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, you're a great host, so thank you for keeping um, it flowing nicely. Um, <laughs> thank you. But uh, I was going to say, just, yeah, if you want to follow, I mean, anything I'm working on or doing or any organization that I'm involved with, um, I'm pretty good about posting stuff on social media. So yeah. you can, you know, totally find everything I'm working on or involved in on my, on my Instagram, which is at Robert Palmer Watkins, my Twitter, Robert P. Watkins. My Facebook fan page, which is Robert Palmer Watkins. Um, and I have a Snapchat, which is just for fun. But that's Rob Watkins if you want to follow that as well. So Okay. Yeah, I think I have a Snapchat too that I never use. Yeah, there's, I just, think you know, there's just too many things. There's too many ways to show what you're doing. Right? It's, it's like, why do it's we crazy. need so many? But Yeah. Well, it's it's like earlier when I was trying to get the link to you. And I was like, wait a minute. I can't do this on Instagram. I have to do it somewhere else. And then messaging wasn't set up for Facebook. And it, yeah, it's crazy. It's but crazy. the good news is I have all of your social media links minus the Snapchat underneath okay. this video. Nice. People can okay. click on it. Contractors for Kids is up there. Uh, the uh, Soap Fest 
link is up there and all of my links are up there as well. So anybody needs to check anything out, keep its matches up there, all of that. So you can just click on those links underneath the, uh, the interview. So. Perfect. Thank you so Thank much you. for having me on tonight. It's so good to meet you and talk yeah. to you guys. Good to meet you too. And thanks for coming on. And like I said, you know, come back anytime. Next time, maybe you come back and sing some of your original music. All right. I'm down. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, keep in touch and keep us informed on your, your projects. So. All right. For sure. Have a good okay. night, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Right, bye.